Hello, St. Pius Small Groups. I'm Katie Skirpon, and thanks for letting me join you for a few minutes tonight as we enter into week three of our series, Here on Purpose. Let's do a little bit of review to make sure we're all on the same page. In week one, we explored how we are here on this planet for a purpose. We're known by God, and He desires to use us to glorify Him and to lead others to Him as well. In week two, we dove deep into some of the most important relationships we have, our families. There are no perfect families, no perfect parents, perfect kids, perfect anything. But there is a perfect God who desires to be involved in your family. Our purpose is to glorify God because we're here in our families on purpose. So this week we're talking about our workplaces. It's another place where we can see that God has placed us there for a purpose. Yes, how we work, treat others in our workplace, get our tasks done, work to the best of our ability, look at our colleagues and bosses with respect, choose to honor and listen, to never disrespect others, all of those things matter because we are examples of God's presence in our workplaces. Now, when I say workplace, for the purpose of our discussion, I mean the broadest possible version of that. Some of us work in schools, some in buildings with endless offices and cubicles, some in our homes chasing little ones, some caring for aging parents. All of these are workplaces, and all are places that we are for a purpose. And that's because my workplace is my mission field and the place where I can glorify Him. Our coworkers need to see Christ in how we act and how we talk. So how can I use my God-given purpose to glorify Him at my workplace? There's five practical ways that we can do this. Number one, do your work. St. Paul in the letter to Colossians tells us, Whatever work you do, do it from the heart, as for the Lord and not for others. This verse encourages all believers to work as unto the Lord, because how we go about our work is a direct reflection of God. Doing our work well glorifies Him, and not only doing our work glorifies Him, but our attitude doing it does as well. So do your work well. Number two, honor your coworkers and boss. How we treat our coworkers and our boss matters. Yes, even when they are not around, do we honor them? Do we defend them? We set ourselves up to glorify God when we treat them with respect. As human beings created in the image and likeness of God, they deserve our respect. And scripture also tells us to respect human institutions and authority. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 13-15, to 15, it tells us, Be subject to every human institution for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or to governors as sent by him, for the punishment of evildoers and the approval of those who do good. For it is the will of God that by doing good, you may silence the ignorance of foolish people. We're in our workplaces for a purpose, and most of those workplaces have a sense of authority and structure. So honor your coworkers and boss. Treat them as the children of God that they are. Number three, be a friend. I'm sure you've heard it said, if you want friends, be a friend. Our friends need people in their lives that bring hope and joy. We were never designed to live life alone. It wasn't God's plan in the first place. And you can go all the way back to that first book of Genesis to see it. We're all in this together. The Bible has some strong words for those who have friends. Proverbs tells us, A friend loves at all times. Glorifying God in your workplace means looking at your coworkers and showing care and concern for them. Are you praying for them? Seeking ways to encourage? Seek to be their friend. Seek to glorify God in that relationship. Number four, talk about Jesus. When you hear that statement, I'm betting some of you are squirming a little bit. Why? Is it fear, lack of confidence? Maybe afraid of persecution or standing too far apart from the crowd? How many of us don't even say grace at our lunch breaks? And why is that? Fear can paralyze all of us. But to glorify God in our workplace it means we have to be willing to speak up about our faith. There's nothing wrong with saying his name at work. There's nothing wrong about talking where our strength come from, comes from. 
and how we have hope for tomorrow. The Gospel of Matthew tells us, Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my Heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my Heavenly Father. And denying doesn't just mean outright saying, oh, I don't believe. Denying can mean having opportunities to talk about Jesus and what he's done in our lives and choosing not to take those opportunities. So don't be afraid to integrate your faith into your work life. Our faith can't just be about Sunday. It has to impact our Mondays too. And Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. Number five, be an encourager, not a discourager. First Thessalonians tells us, therefore encourage one another and build one another up, as indeed you do. When we seek to lift up our co-workers with our words and actions, we're displaying the character and nature of God. He accepted us in our sin, and so we're called to accept others. God speaks truth and love to us, so we need to speak truth and love to others. God doesn't ignore us, so don't ignore others. Jesus is the ultimate example of this for all of us, and he laid down his very life for us. As we're walking through this series, we're asking ourselves three big questions. This week, when we ask those three questions, think about how God could use you if you choose to honor him in your place of work. Let's ask and answer these three questions together. Number one, why am I here? I'm here to glorify God in my work. According to Colossians 3.23, we are to work at it with all our heart. When we work hard, we're glorifying him. When we do our work well and show up with a good attitude, we're glorifying him. Number two, who am I here to impact with my love? I'm here to impact my boss and my coworkers. Relationships are a big deal to us. And instead of talking down to others, creating unrest, why not be a person who seeks peace and displays unconditional love to those that we work with? People make mistakes and will disappoint us. It's just a fact of life. But instead of letting those issues get in the way, let's be examples of God's forgiveness and love, even to those we work with. Number three, is my yes on the table? When God prompts me to invite my coworkers to church, I need to answer yes. As we live the life God desires, yes will come really easy. But if we're living a secret life, choosing to ignore Christ at work, yes doesn't come so easily. In this case, shame's usually the driving force behind our no. Are you confident that God is at work in your life? Then shine. Yes, we all messed up, but are we leaning and learning and trusting in the Lord to get us through? Our coworkers are watching how we handle adversity. So trust the Lord with every situation and seek to glorify Him through it all. Ultimately, the question is, Do I have a desire to see others come to know Christ? It's a core question we have to ask ourselves. Are we missing God's opportunity when we say no to his call to share Christ with others? We have to ask ourselves this hard question. Why do I run from an opportunity to share Christ? Especially when it's at work. Is fear holding me back? Do I not feel equipped to share my faith? Can you imagine what life would be like on the other side of yes? If we all said, yes, I will share my faith at work. Ultimately, God has placed you in your workplace on purpose to glorify him and to shine his light in a dark world. Put your yes on the table. Give God your yes to share your faith at work.